After the feast, more or less, came the speech. Most of the company were, however, now in a tolerant mood, at that delightful stage which they called filling up the corners. They were sipping their favorite drinks and nibbling at their favorite dainties, and their fears were forgotten. They were prepared to listen to anything and to cheer at every full stop. My dear people, began Bilbo, rising in his place. Hear, 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 they shouted, and kept on repeating it in chorus, seeming reluctant to follow their own advice. Bilbo left his place and went and stood on a chair under the illuminated tree. The light of the lanterns fell on his beaming face. The golden buttons shone on his embroidered silk waistcoat. They could all see him standing, waving one hand in the air, the other was in his trouser pocket. My dear Bagginses and Boffins! He began again. And my dear Tooks and Brandybucks! And Grubs! And Chubs! And Burrowses! And Horn Blowers! And Bulgers! Brace Girdles! Good Bodies! Brockhouses! And Proudfoots! Proud Feet! shouted an elderly hobbit from the back of the pavilion. His name, of course, was Proudfoot, and well merited. His feet were large, exceptionally furry, and both were on the table. Proudfoots, repeated Bilbo. Also, my good Sackville Bagginses, that I welcome back at last to Bag End. Today is my 111th birthday! I am 11 today! Hooray! Hooray! Many happy returns, they shouted. And they hammered joyously on the tables. Bilbo was doing splendidly. This was the sort of stuff they liked. Short and obvious. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves as much as I am. Deafening cheers. Cries of yes and no. Noises of trumpets and horns, pipes and flutes, and other musical instruments. There were, as has been said, many young hobbits present. Hundreds of musical crackers had been pulled. Most of them bore the mark Bale on them, which did not convey much to most of the hobbits, but they all agreed they were marvellous crackers. They contained instruments, small but of perfect make, and enchanting tones. Indeed, in one corner, some of the young Tukes and Brandybucks, supposing Uncle Bilbo to have finished, since he had plainly said all that was necessary, now got up an impromptu orchestra and began a merry dance tune. Master Everard Duke and Miss Mellilock Brandybuck got on the table and with bells in their hands began to dance the Springle Ring. A pretty dance, but rather vigorous. But Bilbo had not finished. Seizing a horn from a youngster nearby, he blew three loud hoots. The noise subsided. I shall not keep you long, he cried. Cheers from all the assembly. I have called you all together for a purpose. Something in the way that he said this made an impression. There was almost silence, and one or two of the Tukes pricked up their ears. Indeed, for three purposes. First of all, to tell you that I am immensely fond of you all, and that eleventy-one years is too short a time to live among such excellent and admirable hobbits. Tremendous outburst of approval. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. This was unexpected and rather difficult. There was some scattered clapping, but most of them were trying to work it out and see if it came to a compliment. Secondly, to celebrate my birthday. Cheers again. I should say our birthday, for it is, of course, also the birthday of my heir and nephew, Frodo. He comes of age and into his inheritance today. Some perfunctory clapping by the elders. And some loud shouts of Frodo, Frodo, jolly old Frodo from the juniors. The Sackville Bagginses scowled and wondered what was meant by coming into his inheritance. Together, we score 144. Your numbers were chosen to fit this remarkable total. One gross, if I may use the expression. No cheers. This was ridiculous. 
Many of his guests, and especially the Sackville Bagginses, were insulted, feeling sure they had only been asked to fill up the required number, like goods in a package. One gross indeed. Vulgar expression. It is also, if I may be allowed to refer to ancient history, the anniversary of my arrival by Beryl at Esgaroth on the Long Lake. Though the fact that it was my birthday slipped my memory on that occasion, I was only 51 then, and birthdays did not seem so important. <laughs> the banquet was very splendid, however, though I had a bad cold at the time, I remember, and could only say, Thank you very much. I now repeat it more correctly. Thank you very much for coming to my little party. Obstinate silence. They all feared that the song, or some poetry, was now imminent, and they were getting bored. Why couldn't he stop talking and let them drink his health? But Bilbo did not sing or recite. He paused for a moment. Thirdly and finally, he said, I wish to make an announcement! He spoke this last word so loudly and suddenly that everyone sat up who still could. I regret to announce that, though, as I said, eleventy-one years is far too short a time to spend among you. This is the end. I am going. I am leaving now. Goodbye. He stepped down and vanished. There was a blinding flash of light, and the guests all blinked. When they opened their eyes, Bilbo was nowhere to be seen. One hundred and forty-four flabbergasted hobbits sat back speechless. Old Dodo Proudfoot removed his feet from the table and stamped. Then there was a dead silence. Until suddenly, after several deep breaths, every Baggins, Boffin, Tube, Brandybuck, Grub, Chub, Burrows, Bulger, Bracegirdle, Brockhouse, Good Body, Hornblower, and Proudfoot began to talk at once. It was generally agreed that the joke was in very bad taste, and more food and drink were needed to cure the guests of shock and annoyance. He's mad, I always said so! was probably the most popular comment. Even the Tooks, with a few exceptions, thought Bilbo's behaviour was absurd. For the moment, most of them took it for granted that his disappearance was nothing more than a ridiculous prank. But old Rory Brandybuck was not so sure. Neither age nor an enormous dinner had clouded his wits, and he said to his daughter-in-law, Esmeralda, There's something fishy in this, my dear. I believe that mad Baggins is off again. <laughs> Silly old fool, but why worry? He hasn't taken the victuals with him. He called loudly to Frodo to send the wine round again. Frodo was the only one present who had said nothing. For some time he had sat silent beside Bilbo's empty chair and ignored all remarks and questions. He had enjoyed the joke, of course, even though he had been in the know. He had difficulty in keeping from laughter at the indignant surprise of the guests, but at the same time, he felt deeply troubled. He realized suddenly that he loved the old hobbit dearly. Most of the guests went on eating and drinking, and discussing Bilbo Baggins' oddities, past and present, but the Sackville Bagginses had already departed in wrath. Frodo did not want to have any more to do with the party. He gave orders for more wine to be served. Then he got up and drained his own glass silently, to the health of Bilbo, and slipped out of the pavilion. <laughs>